Hey guys, welcome back to Bits Be Trippin'. This is your host Carter with Ray. Let's get into this. So this is kind of part two of the video. If you haven't seen the previous one, you want to click up there to get you to that. And this is kind of the intro to crypto. And we kind of went through what the start of what crypto is, how does it work? Why do people mine? What is going on in the space when it comes to like the government? That sort of stuff is in that previous video. We're getting into the components that make up mining uh, right here. So we're going to start essentially from like the GPU, CPU uh, mining aspect. And then you also will see an A6 slash FPGA. So we'll, we got all three uh, major components there. Uh, and we're going to go through that right now. So one of the questions that Ray and I were talking about was, you know, what do you mine? What coins do you mine? How do you mine? And then that got into, well, we should talk about what the hardware is first. And then we can, it'll help explain when I start talking about like what algorithm um, is centric to a piece of hardware and how that works. Because there's certain things when I talk about like F hash that has to be memory centric, you know, on the GPU. And then some things when we start talking about, um, Something like Monero mining is mainly on the CPU. So let's go through the crawl walk run of what the components are. So most people that are mining when we call it GPU mining is using a computer. Okay, so a GPU mining has to have a CPU and a motherboard, has to have memory on that board, and then has to have at least a single GPU that can handle the algorithm that we're, we're talking about. Um, so for any new folks that are here, we, we've got essentially a mining rig broke down into the main components. So you have a typical motherboard, the things that you care about this, I'm just going to narrow down to the things that you care. It's all about graphics card density on mo most motherboards. So if you have a motherboard like this, that holds, uh, you know, this will actually hold up to seven GPUs that is determined by these little slots right here. So these are PCIe slots. And then there's these little, um, uh, M.2 slots, which we'll see in an, a future build here of how you would be able to expand to that to add another one of these little like little one X slots. We'll make sure we zoom in so you guys can see that. And what these do is these are the interface to the graphics card. So this is the motherboard itself is made up of the CPU memory. If there's a disk or hard drive um, SSD, um, and then it connects to power like from a power supply and then a graphics card. So uh, I, what I've told for most people is, you know, how a computer works. You got to think of this whole thing like a library. Your computer uh, processor itself is like the librarian in the library. Your memory that's usually sitting here, it's usually just a stick of memory here, is the table space in the library. So if you're in a library, you're like, okay, there's tables. The more memory you have, the more things you can have open at one time on the computer, like on the operating system. Then you have your storage drive here, which is... You know, in this particular case, most mining rigs have like a 120 gigabyte storage. If you're building like a Windows miner or um, something smaller, like a, like a USB drive that has like a USB stick that you would put in, you'd have for like Linux because you don't need a ton of space. But Windows is huge and requires at least about half this drive. Um, this is like your shelf space in the library. So where you put the book, right? So you got librarian, you got uh, table space, things that are open, books open on the shelf and your, your storage space where your books are stored, right? More of this that you got, more books you can store. Mining doesn't care. It doesn't really store much. There's logs of what's going on, but there's not a huge amount of storage requirement. So most of the time you can go to like a USB stick for your mining on your builds to save you some cost there. Um, the density that I was talking about are the, the slots here where the graphics card plugs into. The more of those you have, the more of these you can have, the less amount of, you know, replicating this you have to do, right? So if you could put seven cards in this, uh, you know, there are some other boards that we have in the back and we'll show in future videos here that have 13, some that have 19 of these slots. Um, to make them work, you, there's a few caveats, like to make 19 work, you have to have eight of this one specific type of card and then you can have 11 that make up any other card and then you would have a total of 19. Otherwise you can go with just 13. Don't worry about trying to keep track of the numbers just right now. I'm just giving you a context of how dense can you make a single mining rig. Most people land on 
anywhere from six to eight and with some of the folks that really push for trying to get 12 cards on a single setup here. Um, and that way you don't have to buy another processor, buy more memory, right? You, you can buy that once and then you can just, your cost augmentation is really around how many graphics cards can you have on it? Because these are what's really doing the processing for you. So in uh, algorithms like Ethereum, Ethash, and like Ravencoin's Kapow, um, Ergo has its own um, algorithm too. There's a couple other coins out there that have different algorithms. They perform differently on different GPUs, um, but it really comes down to, you know, identifying one first what's available. Because in this day and age right now, it's really hard to get a hold of GPUs. Um, but you know, and then you kind of model your build around how much power you're going to need. And we'll get into when we actually get into this build. We'll go through how you would start to calculate some of the power. We have some meters here that on, on the shelf over there that we're going to go through and show you guys how to like measure your power and such. And um, so you got the power requirements and then you got how to make sure that you're handling the heat. So that's another big thing because right, these things put out a lot of heat. This particular card here, this is an RX 480 eight gigabyte card, um, which is how much memory is on it. And this is like a blower type of type of fan. This is like a hair dryer. So heat generated inside this GPU. The fan here is uh, creating an inflow of air this way, and then it's blowing it out like this, like a hair dryer. Okay, so they call this like a hair dryer blower card. Um, a lot of heat exiting this way. Um, so if you had six or eight of those blowing out, you got to deal with that heat. And that's either trapping the heat and then having it vented out through like a grow tent or something like that if you have a lot of them in your basement because um, you're trying to contain that. Otherwise, it's just heating up everything in the house um, or doing, uh, you know, some kind of other like um, outdoor setup where you have like a outdoor garage with like ventilation coming in and then blowing out. Like you have to deal with heat if you scale up, but that's a huge consideration. Part of also dealing with that is going to where you're not just plugging these cards into the board, right? And just plugging them like, um, there, this is the way we would set it up. So I'm trying to get to where you guys can see this. So this card with interfaces out. So interfaces back here for the main board interfaces where you're going to plug in stuff here so the card goes in like a little slot here and then you would have um the the setup like that you know so if you had like three of these here these cards would be right next to each other and they would just be sucking in heat from each other that's that literally is a bad thing you don't want that like if you had another card right here it literally would be feeding the heat off of that pulling it in here mixing the heat here and now this card would be overheating the middle one here would probably bake out and then um, the outer one here would be not doing as bad because it would be sucking fresh air in. But so the, one of the first things that you, you end up wanting to do with these, and we can hit this little tab here to release that, that GPU is you put them in a riser and that's what these little guys are. Now, each of these interfaces on these cards are considered, these are what they would call 16 X. It's 16 lanes of traffic input, uh, output. Think of it like lanes on a highway, like 16, 8 each way. Um, then some of these other slots here are 8x, so they're four and four effectively input outputs. Um, just think of it that way. And then you have 1x slots, right? Which it's the bandwidth, so you have like one lane of traffic. Mining in general in this space does not require hardly any interface requirement. It's so low on the requirements that it doesn't matter that they get all the way down to 1x. That's why you'll have like a riser is just facilitating the ability to communicate with the GPU. So you put the riser there, and then there's two things that go onto the riser. The risers have an input for power, because you gotta power this slot, right? And these slots are built onto the board so they get power. And then you have your data cable. So we'll have a different power that will connect onto the back of this from the power supply. And we'll go through all this, like when we're when you're setting it up, and I'll have you plugging it in and everything on the on the the video. But this is a data cable for it to be able to communicate and get the instructions essentially from the motherboard. And that's all this thing is, is extending it down to this little 1x adapter that then plugs in to this computer like that. And then that would then be rised above, you know, this thing. And then you can separate them, giving you the extension of this cable length, right? So that's the point of the risers. All we're doing is lifting them away from the board. 
And that's all this thing's serving purpose on. Now, this is also one of your highest failure rates on an entire mining rig. Uh, for a range of reasons, uh, I mean, this one's, I think, like version 12 or so. Um, yeah, it's like version 12. Some of the older ones that we pulled off on the other rig before setting up was version 6. Um, those seem to be pretty stable, but these capacitors and some of this... Um, infrastructure they have on this riser isn't the best quality stuff they try to make these pretty cheap you know seven to ten bucks at most um and because of that the components aren't probably the best and when you're running a lot of heat and power through them over a long period of time they break down so if you end up having a problem with your mining rig more than likely it's your riser and it's always good if you're ever picking up a machine or buying a thing you always get extra risers because one of your first culprits is like shoot i'm my computer was mining fine, and now I'm, I don't see one of the GPUs. I have a six-part rig. I only see five now. What's going on? First thing I would check is this. Like, you know, pull it out, try to, you know, I want to say give it the old Nintendo, you know, uh, test there. But, like, just reseat the connections. These, I mean, they're not the best connections ever. Um, sometimes you can also rotate kind of from one slot to another and kind of flip them, and we'll see that on the mining rig. Just different troubleshooting techniques, but just center it around the fact of the way the interface works. This is the interface to this. If you don't see this GPU on your mining rig, your first check is your interface piece here. And then that should give you that kind of setup there. So um, then, so that's the GPU setup. You got power, you got the things that we were just talking about. There's other aspects of other different coins that went to... Um, programmable versions of this which is called a uh, fpga field programmable gate array so what that is is one of these little guys like an example and this is a bad example because these didn't work very well these are squirrel miners um this was kind of like a a testing specification that never really worked out very well and um we kind of lost our money on it unfortunately but there are other uh, FPGAs that are just, they're like a graphics card, but they're programmable. You will send a specific code to these and then they'll run that code in a more hardware centric way. Um, so FPGA is not really popular. Um, the problem with them are, is one, they're pretty expensive. Two, it takes like a CS degree type of person to write the bit stream for it. And you really have to understand on how to do that. Hard to find people that will, uh, I mean, you're essentially you're paying for the bitstream, and after you pay for the bitstream and pay for this card, the ROI on it's usually pretty long. So unless you have some kind of competitive advantage to be able to get a bitstream for these, they're not usually um, that highly sought after. Um, and then the last piece here I'll talk on just the hardware side, on the mining side, is something like an ASIC. Um, so this is one that just got sent over uh, recently from iPolo. iPolo was a company that only exclusively went through China. Um, essentially, when they built stuff, they had customers in China that would just buy up all their hardware. So never we never saw iPolo come over here. Um, now with the ban in China, a lot of stuff like this is starting to come over. They had made a Grin miner. Grin is this particular algorithm, uh, different coin. Had some popularity there for a little bit, kind of fell off the wayside. They already had the hardware built. This is kind of the risk with mining. Like you could buy something like this and then um, it doesn't, it starts losing its popularity and it takes a little longer to pay something like this off. Um, but it is a dedicated device, a lot easier than all of this stuff to manage. Like literally you plug this in, it goes to an interface, you set your pull and you walk away from it and you will never usually need to do anything with this at all. So this is just reinforcing the network, compartmentalized, super low touch maintenance standpoint. So if that's something for people, this is the kind of device that they'd want to get for the particular algorithm they want. Um, that's effectively it on that. You'll see Bitcoin is uh, all ASICs. So there's a handful of companies that make that. What's Miner, Bitmain, um, in a Silicon. There's a huge amount of companies that make different miners that have different ranges of performance and cost. So uh, it's good to have diversity in that so you can have an opportunity to buy. But Bitcoin, uh, Litecoin, Dogecoin, those are all ASICs uh, mined. Dogecoin being merge mined, we'll talk about that later. But uh, Ethereum and Ravencoin and that kind of stuff um, being on GPU mining. So uh, you got questions on any? I know there's a lot going on that I just went through here. I know you probably got lots of questions and we will get some of those questions. I think during a live stream when we're kind of just going through it, you'll have right. a lot more, but 
I, it's a lot. It's kind of a data dump. Um, if you have anything, that, I mean, based on what you've seen. So like the coins like Ravencoin, Ethereum, you can't, there's none of the, like the. That's a good question. Actually, so there are companies that do attempt to make one of these. Um, there was the Bitmain made something called an E3. It was roughly as efficient as the best graphics card at the time. Um, right. Uh, it had a little lower power usage because it was a little more specific to what it was doing. Um, there has since been a couple other companies that have been pretty low key on the new development um, of their hardware, and it's going to a limited set of people um, that is a lot more efficient. It would be equivalent to, you know, 20 of the highest end GPUs for one small device like this it uses about 3,500 watts of power versus like a 10,000 watts of power and 15 devices, you know, 15 graphics right. cards, right? So, but they're very low production, um, at least making it to the public. They could be for special uh, buyers. Uh, that's where the algorithm adjustment comes in. And before this, we were talking about uh, Ravencoin moving from X16R's algorithm, um, where it was doing just on GPUs. And then one of these devices came out and it was just taking over the network with a small amount of participants. Most um, open source, fair market launch coins will pivot. They'll 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 put a warning out there like, don't try to build something like this because we will, the community will shift the algorithm to something else. And that's what happened to a couple of coins. So, uh, Monero used to be GPU mined. Uh, used to be very good on something called the Vega 56s and 64 GPUs from Radeon. It was like the premier GPU to use for those. And then they started seeing some FPGAs being made to mine that were using HBM2, the type of memory that, that's on those graphics cards. So it was an FPGA plus a lot of good memory. And um, they were exponentially faster than these. So then you saw the network going up and not people being able to compete. So Monero switched to a different algorithm called Random X, which is highly specific to a CPU. So not even GPUs, it's actually only using the CPU. So certain series of those types of CPUs, like the uh, AMD uh, Ryzen series, which is like the higher end newer AMD series, is like what people like to use Monero mining with. So it doesn't even use GPUs, it's only used on the computer. So people get big farms of computers. Um, CPU mining centric coins, there's a problem, there's kind of a an existential problem with that because then you have a lot more malware and stuff being created around CPUs because not a lot of people have high-end GPUs, mainly gamers and people um, that like like do just GPU mining. But lots of people have CPUs, right? They're in schools or in medical places. They're everywhere. CPUs are everywhere. So if you have a CPU generated coin, part of the risk you run is people will maliciously make software in like browsers and stuff that will use that kind of stuff. So um, that's part of the risk too. All right, guys. So let's wrap this one up. We got a lot more coming to you. We're going to do a full build of the computer. Um, Ray's going to build it. I'm, I'm literally going to be kind of just like, here, here's why you want to do that. And Ray's going to build it. Uh, and as he's going through that, it's going to be, um, I think, a good one because it'll help explain versus me just doing things that I just naturally do. And I don't really explain when I'm going through my normal builds. This will help explain why, I think. And then we'll get you configured on a wallet. On, we'll try a couple different coins and the configuration so that will be its own video it'll probably be a little longer video with the build video and then the subsequent like configuration so you guys will want to stick for for that one we'll try a range of different coins and different hardware we'll do both radeon amd stuff and nvidia stuff so because there is a difference when that comes to the tech stack on that and their abilities from a gpu standpoint so hopefully you guys like this series and you know, make sure you're subscribing. We're trying to get to 100K subscribers on this uh, this channel. It's been a long time. I can't wait to hit that 100K subscribers, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.